Welcome to the Comlex 5 minute review. Again, please visit us at www.comlexflashcards.com for more information on how to prepare for the Comlex board exam. Today's topic is conjunctivus. This is a very high yield topic and it's important to group the different conjunctivus, whether it's viral, bacterial, um, in terms of the day of appearance once the disease has started. So for example, in viral conjunctivitis there is mainly a um, inflamed palpable bulbar conjunctiva. Um, it's due to adenovirus type 3. There's unilateral or bilateral edema and hyperemia. Watery discharge, ipsilateral, periocular lymphadenopathy, and that's a key association. Um, and there may be symptoms of pharyngitis, fever, or malaise. Management is mainly warm compressors and sulfonamide drops to prevent secondary bacterial infections or uh, topical vasoconstrictors. In bacterial conjunctivus, you have this copient pur purulent discharge from both the eyes, which can be yellow or green. There's mild discomfort. Um, patients can develop a corneal ulcer, and the diagnosis is made by gram stain. Again, in this case, the organism that causing bacterial conjunctivitis is staph pneumonia, staph aureus, or moraxella. With chlamydial conjunctivus, you can definitely see that um, there is typical inclusion bodies, okay? It's commonly found in sexually active young adults, um, and you want to look for systemic signs of the sexually transmitted disease. There are several serotypes like A, B, B, A, and C that cause trichomotis, um, and serotypes D through K produce adult inclusion conjunctivitis. Now, the eye infection is generally uh, greater than three weeks and doesn't respond to antibiotics. There's a mucopurulent discharge, um, and periauricular lymphadenopathy can be noted. Again, chemosis is a term that says that membranes that line the eyelids and surface of the eye are swollen. Okay. Now, how do you make the diagnosis? Well, to make the diagnosis of chlamydial organococcal conjunctivitis, you can try fluorescent antibody stain, enzyme immunoassays, a GEMSA stain, which is basically a stain to check for intracytoplasmic inclusions in the epithelial cells. Um, and the management revolves around using tetracycline, um, azithromycin, and amoxicillin, as well as erythromycin. You can also try topical erythromycin and tetracycline, but oral is generally the first choice. Now, the gonococcal infections can be cured by using ceftriaxone 1 gram IM and then 1 gram IV 24 hours later. So it's important to know whether you have to give the medications oral, topical, or IM versus IV. Allergic conjunctivitis is generally due to an allergen. Um, there's itching, tearing, redness, a discharge, which is stingy, and uh, photophobia as well as visual loss is present. Um, patients also have hypertrophic palpable conjunctiva, um, and there's no preauricular nodes here. The management revolves around using topical antihistamines, vasoconstrictors, mast cell degranulation inhibitors, and so it's your typical picture of an allergy, and controlling the allergen is going to help as well. Again, look for things such as stingy discharge, hypertrophic palpable conjunctiva with cobblestoning appearance of the papillae and no preauricular nodes. Let's review dacrocystitis. This is a nasolacrimal obstruction leading to a sac infection. Acutely can be caused by staph aureus, group B hemolytic strep, and chronically by staph epidermidis. The chronic etiology results in mucosal degradation, ductile stenosis, stagnant tears, as well as bacterial overgrowth. And patients present with pain, redness, swelling, purulent discharge, um, and you know to make the diagnosis mainly physical exam, but you can refer to a CT if needed. Um, the management involves oral augmentin and antibiotic drops, warm compressors, and for adults, Keflex or augmentin, in addition to topical antibiotic um, drops, are useful. Then there can be foreign bodies. Well, foreign bodies um, are clinically manifested with acute pain, redness. Um, to diagnose it, you would have to either look at the visual acuity on physical exam, uh, look at the fluorescent staining test, um, and management involves applying a local anesthetic, normal saline flush, 
with a sterile cotton tip applicator to fix the uh, foreign body and remove it if possible. This is a high yield topic, periorbital versus orbital cellulitis. Now in periorbital cellulitis, um, what happens here is it's limited to the eye lids, okay? It remains anterior to the orbital septum. So the orbital septum is mainly a membranous sheet in the upper eyelid attached to the edge of the orbit where it is continuous with the periosteum. The etiology is hor can be caused by calcion conjunctivus, dacrocystitis, hordeolum, and in terms of um, the periorbital cellulitis, it remains anterior to this septum. In orbital cellulitis, it's posterior to the septum. Unilateral young patients present with sinus infection through the ethmoid bone, um, and you have to treat this aggressively to avoid extension into the meninges and the brain via the cavernous sinus. So here's a picture of periorbital cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. You see that periorbital cellulitis um, can basically present with conjunctiva, fever, um, periorbital soft tissue swelling, um, possible otitis media, non-tender, um, palpation of the areas around the eye, normal intraocular pressure, normal visual acuity, and normal sensation. Again, periorbital, a lot of things are normal. With orbital cellulitis, you have increased intraocular pressure, um, impaired visual acuity, um, inability to move the eye muscles, and tenderness with the extraocular muscles. So with diagnosis for making uh, whether or not it's orbital or periorbital, definitely lies on a good physical exam. CT scan of the soft tissue for orbital infiltration and cultures are also recommended. And to manage this condition, such as orbital cellulitis, you'd want to admit the patient to the hospital and start broad-spectrum antibiotics, and in rare cases, consider surgery. So that's a five-minute overview of ophthalmology. And again, visit www.comlexflashcards.com for more resources on how you can prepare for the Comlex board exam. Good luck on your preparation.